Welcome back to the next module in this course where I'm creating my own content operating system. Why? Because there's so many micro SaaS products out there that are really not needed, that you can replicate them within a couple of hours with no code, just building your own workflows that work way more efficiently and for a fraction of the price of what you're paying. Because what I realized very quickly is that if I had five or six or seven different tools that solve a micro problem, it's going to become too operationally complex. So I decided to build my own workflow and it found out that it's so much easier than what I thought. So today we're diving into the YouTube component of that. So this is what I'm calling the content operating system. And the YouTube component is very similar to some of the recent videos. So go back and check them, which means I'm going to go through this a lot faster. If you want to see more of the in-depth formulas and the different automations more in depth and look at some of the previous videos in this series. But we're going to be talking about how the, well, firstly, the ideas of news alerts and YouTube. I didn't actually add that in because I'm going to put the, all, all the ideas and alerts in a different one. I consider that more of a research part of the business rather than a marketing and repurposing part of the business. So my idea is to have different operating systems for different parts of the business. And so, yeah, that'll be added in different, different part. YouTube scripts we're not doing because a lot of the stuff that we do is either repurposing for the other brands or it's just me creating these types of videos. And I don't work well with scripts. Everything that I do is totally off the cuff. I can't do scripts. It just really annoys me. But other things that are very helpful are helping you create YouTube titles, descriptions, thumbnail text, blog posts from your YouTube videos, also very beneficial promotional emails, and then social images, sorry, social media posts like we went through yesterday, and then video reels and hooks as well if you wanted to promote it with using short form content. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And again, the big things here are using your interlinked records. So link to your brand assets. So again, that's how we're setting it up. I'll run through this very quickly because we did this in yesterday's video, but again, we're setting up the ID with a formula. So we're pulling the YouTube video working title for the brand asset. So it's basically this column here for this particular brand asset, because we're going to have multiple brands under this, and then we would just create a different view for each brand. So this would just be, let's call it the Mitch Asa brand. And then we would create a new view. And then to have that new view for just this, which they're all just for that brand currently anyway, we would then just filter this where brand asset is exactly, it's loading, a bit slow, oops, I don't even know if I selected, I did, is exactly Mitch Asa, and then that way, if we have any other brands in there, we can just filter it out through that particular view. But we'll just look at the grid view for now, and then we can also group it by different statuses as well if we wanted to. So all of these ones are currently done, but basically when I'm creating a YouTube video, I create the video, either paste in the transcript from Descript or the video editor or any other type of transcript tool, or I, I upload it to YouTube and leave it there for a little while or auto transcri transcribe. And then I add in the, the working title here, which is my quick title off the cuff. An SEO keyword, if I'm thinking about SEO, I don't think about it too much currently, but if you were more into SEO, you would add that there and I'll show you why later. And then this is where you paste the transcript. So that one's a YouTube video transcript. I believe this one is a Descript transcript. So either one works. Then what we do is send all of that information into Make. So this is the Make workflow right here. And it's always nice to name each of these and talk about what you're sending to Make. All we do is, like I ran through yesterday, this is just a button with the concatenate formula in there and then the record ID attached to the webhook of make.com. If you want that in full detail, go watch the other video. And it pushes it into here through that webhook, pulls the record, which is that particular line in Airtable, and then starts to run it through OpenAI. And then each once each completion from OpenAI is done, feeds it back into Airtable again for us to see. So the first one here that we're looking at is the YouTube titles. So basically, because YouTube transcripts can get a little bit longer, then we need to run it through the GPT-4 Turbo system because that has a higher context window. If it's just GPT-4, then a lot of the times it won't work because it just can't, it, there's not enough tokens for it. But basically I'm asking it to reference the, the draft 
I'll say the video, YouTube video working title, the transcript, and the brand voice from the brand asset that I've attached here. So there's actually a few hidden fields, which is the brand voice excluded words and the writing grade level. I like to push those, every single one of those into each tab so that we can pull it into OpenAI when we need it. So we're just referencing the brand voice so that we're hopefully we can write in the brand voice that we've actually told or that we've actually created at the very start. Then this is where I write the prompt. I try to ensure it doesn't use the excluded words. It still does, but I'm doing my best. But asking it to write 10 variations of titles for this YouTube video, basically I'm saying create five titles that capture attention, almost like clickbaity ones, and then five SEO based ones. I'm giving it a max tokens of 512 and a temperature of 0.5, meaning I want it to stick to the instructions or the prompt fairly closely, but there's a bit more room for creativity than like a 0.3, which I often use. But however, in saying that, ChatGPT uses probably a default of one, which is way too creative in my opinion. And that's why it gives ridiculous answers all the time. So once it then does that, then it sends it back to Airtable. And let's have a look at one of these. So we'll just go into the podcast automation one and we'll just go expand. And that's it. I've actually messed that up. This needs to be, that's the working title. That's why. So this is the AI YouTube titles here. If we expand that, now it's got our five different titles. So these are the attention capturing ones. And then these are the SEO focused ones. It's actually probably a bad example because it didn't really pick up the context of this particular video, although it was an instructional one, which is harder to actually pick up. But some of these were all right. And the podcast automation for an SEO title is, is actually pretty good. I think I ended up using my own compared to what was in here, but at least it, start, it, gi it gives me somewhere to start and it starts to get my brain flowing with different ideas and so forth. And sometimes I'll just combine different parts of these headlines. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing is then we run it through to ask for a description. So the first few prompts are basically the same. And then I'm asking it to write a description, make sure the first 200 characters count, repeat the video keywords. And that's where the SEO keyword comes into play. And a few extra little things here, add a call to action, write like a human, not a robot, add three hashtags relevant to the content and match the brand's voice. So again, 512 tokens and a 0.5 temperature. So that's a little bit creative, but not too much. It then sends that back. This is what it provides. What I would could probably optimize that prompt with is just asking it to be a little bit shorter and more concise. So I might add like a word count. And if I had actual downloads ready, which I don't, so I haven't worried about this, but I would ask it to add these downloads verbatim, including the link so that it doesn't hallucinate or change it. And it adds all of your different, whether it could be, whether it's your social profiles or your different downloads, your different things for sale, your affiliate links adding all of that in there as well, and it will actually do it. The other one which works well with YouTube transcripts is actually doing your timestamps. So we're, we're, act, we're asking it to provide different timestamps, a few things in here, like no longer than five words, but ideally less, giving it an example of how it should be written. And the other thing would be maybe what I notice here is that the, there's probably too many chapters here. I would want to maybe say do three chapters for every 10 minutes or something like that. You could probably add that into the prompt and it would figure it out. So that one's all there. And for the YouTube transcript, it's really accurate. For the Descript transcript, not as accurate, but fairly close. The next one here is then the YouTube thumbnails. If you look at my YouTube thumbnails, let's see if we go. So adding words onto the thumbnails as well, then you might as well Rather than trying to think of that, you might as well ask AI to actually do that. And let's see if we use that for the podcast one, cut podcast costs. Yeah. So I actually use that one here, cut podcast costs in the actual thumbnail itself. So I'm just asking it to provide 10. I'm actually training it with, so the diary of a CEO have really great podcast growing very quickly. So I trained it with some of their particular phrases so that it gets an idea of what you're trying, what you're looking for. And then I prompt it to provide that it must be 18 characters or less, no more than five words. So then it produces those ones that I just showed you. And that's all of the YouTube stuff done within a few seconds, which is pretty cool. And all of that, that I've just created there requires very little uh, editing time. So you just choose a title, you edit this a little bit, 
add your timestamps that you like and then give your AI thumbnail title to Canva or your graphic designer or whatever. And then you put your final edit here. So this is my final edit that I put it down to. I just ran with all of those. Cool. So that's the YouTube part of it. Gets done very quickly. Next, we then look at, okay, when we send out a YouTube video, then we should promote it as well. So we have this email prompts section here and the email prompts located in this other tab. So we've got just like I showed yesterday, the social posts, we've also got email prompts for different parts of the, the content system as well. So it's pulling in the email prompt here, and then I'm asking it to create promotional email for that particular video. All it does now is it creates it when it's done, ticks the box here, and then I go to all promo emails and it should now be in this particular tab. Let's see, potentially this one it doesn't actually look that right. Oh yeah, pod, podcast production. So let's have a look. So this is the email that it creates, which is providing some context or setting the stage. Let's face it, if longer this continues, the more risk you are. So I'm trying to tap into the pain points there and then introducing the YouTube video, three key points, and then a call to action at the end. So it comes into here. I get a notification if I want to come in and check all of these, and then I approve it once it's ready to go. And then either myself or my team members can come in, put this in the CRM and send it. So that's pretty solid as well. And that just run through, runs through a similar automation to this. Then the final ones are very similar or exactly like what we did yesterday. So if you haven't seen the social posts, I'm not going to explain this in depth, but basically again, we're just pulling the social post templates, feeding that into make.com and open AI, and then that's feeding it back into our social or our all social post tab, ready to edit and approve and then send into our scheduling tool or giving it to our social media manager, whatever we want to do. Pretty cool stuff. The other one here as well, which I didn't go through yesterday, so I'll go through today, is creating video reels hooks. So this is good if you have time to create social, uh, shorts content, so reels and stuff, where you want to promote your longer form video. Right now, I'm not doing that. I'm just posting my long form video everywhere because I don't have a lot of time, but eventually I will be creating reels as well. So it's the same setup. We have these reels hooks, which is a few different hooks that I've found actually on TikTok. People talk about their hooks. I screenshot it. I put the template through there. They can be found anywhere or you can just make up your own. So I can create all of these different, different hooks. It runs through the open AI automation. I'll show you that quickly. So this is the Reels hooks automation, very much the same as the social ones that I went through yesterday, which is pulling the records from Airtable, setting the valuable of those prompts, iterating each of those prompts one at a time through OpenAI, asking it to complete or reference the human edited version of the blog post that, it, that we created and which I actually skipped over. I need to go back to that. And then it is putting those through the prompts one at a time. And then once those prompts are done, then it feeds it back into Airtable where I just was showing you the outcome there. So that's how we do that. Exactly the same as social media. If you haven't checked that out yet, go see yesterday's video and it explains it there in much more depth. So I must have skipped over a section. Yes, I did. So the other cool thing with YouTube is if you embed it into a website, then you know, I, I'm not an expert on YouTube SEO, but a lot of people say that if you embed it into your website with a good quality blog post, then that's going to help with your SEO as well. So we might as well create a blog post from here. How do we do that? Basically, that automation, as it says in the description here, is we send the transcript of the YouTube video to make.com for the blog post outline. It then creates this outline. So let's have a look at that. Formatted very badly there, but it should be much nicer. I need to actually fix that particular yeah i've got it as a single line text my bad so if we just save that again it's not going to be it's not going to fix it but imagine that was much more nicely structured blog posts and i'll just do the first one so it'll be basically it's in markdown format which means it uses these hashtags for headlines so h1 is the one hashtag h2 is the two hashtags so it should look something more like this, which is, it's saying here, it's saying this is the main headline of the blog post. This is the introduction. 
in the introduction, I want you to write about these three bullet points. Then in the next section, I want you to write about these three bullet points and then so forth. So it should be more structured like that. So it creates the outline first, and then it uses a similar method where we are setting the variables and shout out to Nick Sarev for this particular workflow. He filled in a lot of different pieces for me and he can explain it way better. So go check out his channel where he talks about, I think like article writing or blog posting, something like that. And he explains this really well, but basically we're setting some variables up front to feed that into chat GPT using JSON format. So a lot of this stuff is what we've run through before. So it's feeding it in using JSON format. All of those variables are set into there. That then creates the outline, which I just went through. Then we're grabbing that outline and we're using this as the input brief for the next section. And then we're iterating it, meaning everywhere where it starts with the two hashtags, so like a H2 or H3, then it's iterating through each of those sections one at a time, but it's also providing the context of what came before it and what's coming after it. So that is then done in this section here, which is the set variable. So we're asking it to replace the input brief, the value by the value with the arrow next to it. And the reason why is because in this particular one, it came up with a great pr prompt, which is it's asking it to write an article, but only focus on the section or the value of where that arrow is pointing. So that's why the arrow was there. I'm going to go more into this particular formula in the blog post section. So subscribe and stick around for that. However, like I said, go see Nick's channel. He explains it really well, but basically it's running through each of these sections one at a time, grabbing each of the outlines and then turning it into an actual blog post. What it will do is we've got this iterator here, meaning it takes all of that information, runs it through the prompt multiple times. Then he came up with another great idea, which I've implemented, but it doesn't work all the time, which is every one in four sections that it generates, um, we're asking it to add some bullet points and subheadings because we don't want it to look exactly the same all the way through. We need to break up the text a little bit to make it look nicer. Humans like seeing different bullet points and different headings through in, in each section of a blog post rather than just big lumps of content in, in each section. So he's saying this filter, basically it is saying 25% of the time, produce a section with more bullet points and headings. And then we set that variable as section text, pull that section text into here again. And then we aggregate all of the answers or all of the outputs rather that come through here multiple times. So this will run through four, five, six, seven times, depending on how big the outline is. And then it will aggregate all of that, all of those outputs into the one and then feed it back into Airtable again. And that's how it gives us our final blog output. So it should look something like this. So you can see it's broken up into, let's get a better view here. So it's got the introduction. It's got the different headlines. It's got some bullet points here in this bit it's got some text here in this bit some more bullet points here all text more bullet points and then the final verdict then you would just come in and edit the final version here to then create the blog post ready to go for the website so that's pretty cool that's the full youtube flow and all of that can be done within including editing time maybe 20 to 30 minutes which is pretty insane so this used, if you, especially if you do a blog post, this would take you like half a day at least if you were fully concentrated trying to do all of this stuff on your own. This is probably my favorite workflow. I'm about to use it now as soon as I finish this video. And yeah, I'm very excited to, to see how it goes at scale for all of our brands. So that's today's workflow. Again, you know, if, if I'm losing you, if you have further questions, put them in the comments below and I'll create them in, in further modules and come back and clarify different parts of this. But basically the idea and the point of doing these videos is to show you how easy it is to build your own workflows and to build what is basically the, an enterprise software for your own company built exactly how you want it. If you do have, need any consulting, reach out to me more than happy to brainstorm with you and see if we can help you out or simply just give you the ideas for you to execute on your own as well. So just hit me up at any time. Thanks for watching. See you in tomorrow's video.